Hi there and welcome to Thursdays with Annette. Today I want to focus on how to survive winter and not pack on the kilos. So grab a pen and paper so you can take notes because I've got lots to share. Um, look, let's talk about the winners before we get into it because we had three fabulous girls who won a cookbook from last week's show. Maxine Moore, uh, Elizabeth Rafters and Julie Trezai's Trezai's won the book number four and I personally signed it for them. So I have a great prize to give away later in the show as well and I also have some very exciting news to share so please stay with me to the end of the show to find out more. I wonder who will be the winner of this week's giveaway. Now let's think about winter. Look I'm dressed up all snug in my winter gear. It's 19 degrees here on the Sunshine Coast. I know for you Melbourneites and everybody else you're probably going really Annette? It's not cold. Well it feels cold to me and I think this is the thing. We've switched over our wardrobe over to wearing maybe the bigger baggier clothes, you know the jumpers, the trackies and these can hide a multitude of sins. Now I've lots of tips for you today but first I want to talk about, let's go into your winter menu, let's talk about the food side first and winter food is really quite different from what you have other times of the year and really the desire for salad become a bit of a thing of the past doesn't it? This is when you need to embrace the veggies and fill up this way. Now winter food can actually be high in fat and the cold days means we crave heartier heavier food such as casseroles and stews. So let's take, take a look at some healthy winter eating options. I'd probably best to start with brekkie, hey? Now some easy ways to warm up first thing in the morning is really a quick one. You just warm up your milk to put with your cereal. Now remember to choose cereals that have at least three grams of fiber per serve such as porridge or wheat bix. Now porridge is a great winter favorite but make sure you use the rolled oats as these are the ones higher in fiber than the quick oats. Now if you like a cooked breakfast I've got some great recipes in my breakfast section in book three such as my big breakfast or ham and cheese omelette. Now there are some great recipes in this section so take time and check it out. That's book three. Now if you want to have eggs for breakfast you can poach or you could use cooking spray to fry an egg. Or maybe what about a small can of beans, you know baked beans and a slice of multi-grain toast. I often like a grilled cheese and tomato on toast for breakfast, just something a bit warm isn't it? Now when you're thinking about toast though the best choices are the ones that are either multi-grain or whole meal. So that way you're getting extra fiber because I like you getting fiber because that means you're going to be feeling full longer. And if you want bacon the best one to have is the bacon shortcuts because that's the leanest of all. But don't rely on just the protein to fill up. You know add to that sliced tomatoes, mushrooms and spinach to bulk up your breakfast. If you're stuck for time in the morning, which can be for a lot of us, then do what I do every day and I have one of my healthy breakfast shakes. You know, I love it. But now let's go to lunch. Now winter is a great time to heat up your leftovers from the night before if you have them. Or my favorite winter lunch is definitely soup. I love it. And I have lots and lots of fabulous soup recipes in my cookbooks and you can freeze single serves to take to work if that makes it easier for you. You could cook up a pot on the weekend and you'll have a delicious lunch for the rest of the week ahead. Now if you don't have a way to warm up soup at work then buy one of those wide rimmed um, mouthed flasks um, because and, and that way it'll keep it all warm for you while you're at work. Now this is what my little, my little granddaughter Portia takes to school and it's fantastic. It keeps it all warm and it just gives her something nice and I think it's just a nice way to have something warm on a cold day. Another warm lunch idea would probably be like toasted sandwich or jaffles. You know we're Aussies we love our jaffles. Or what about a stuffed spud? Now you could microwave the potato for a quick lunch option. You don't have to bake it in the oven. And this is another way to use up your leftovers to put over the spud. I do have some delicious fillings in book one in the recipe for stuffed potatoes if you need ideas. Okay now let's go to dinner because there's, I want to give you a few options there. Now when you're making casseroles or stews, because this is obviously a winter favorite, 
cut off the visible fat from the meat before you cook it. That's really important. And buy only the leanest of meats and mince and skinless chicken breast, of course. Now, there are loads of delicious winter warming recipes in my cookbook, so you really don't have to worry about ideas. I've totally got you covered with all the eight books. And um, the other thing that before we finish up on the food is the, the snacks. Let's have some warm snack ideas, like definitely a cup of soups, fruit toast or crumpets, toast or English muffins, or have a baked apple instead of a fresh apple. I have a great recipe for this in book five. I love it, I make it a lot. Or you could always bake from my, my baking sections in all the cookbooks for the guilt-free snack options, such as muffins, scones, or pikelets, and make you know some ahead and freeze so you have them on hand to pop into the lunch boxes each day. But if you like a hot chocolate on a cold night, which I know that's very tempting, you could use the Jarrah chocolate, that's not a bad option. Or what I love in the afternoon when I'm hungry, because that's often when the sun goes down, it gets a bit cool, I make up a wicked cho chocolate shake. You know, I love it. And I use it with hot water. I don't put cold water in it, I mix it with hot water and it's delicious. But what I really love about having that shake in the afternoon, it's got that seven grams of fiber, so it actually fills me up, keeps me, you know, perfect till dinner time and it's really yum. You know, the thing is, by making wise decisions with your food, food choices over winter, you will reap the rewards when summer comes. So planning ahead is important. So think healthy when it comes to meals over winter. So your meal planning is now covered and I've got eight tips to finish with for surviving winter. But before I talk about these tips, I, I want to share you my exciting news. I can't wait. Can I have a drum roll please, people? <laughs> Today, yes, today, I'm launching my six-week winter weight loss challenge. That's right. As we know, winter presents new hurdles when we're on a weight loss plan. And I remember too well the battle of the bulge over winter when I weighed 100 kilos. It wasn't great. But you know what? I've spent 26 winters in my healthy weight range and I've used what I've learned to create some incredibly delicious new menu plans. I've got videos and articles in this winter challenge, they're all new, and I've shared things that helped me on my journey, including how I overcome comfort eating, and I got to my goal weight. I wanna share this with you, and the new menu plans are packed with all my favorite winter recipes cooked the Annette way, of course, and you also get to join our beautiful, supportive, closed Facebook community of people walking the same journey as you so you'll never feel alone. If you're not sure whether this will work for you, we actually surveyed the people who did the March challenge. 87%, that's right, 87% of those surveyed lost weight on the program. I mean, that's really incredible. And 29% of them had lost five kilos or more. Now, obviously, I can't promise what your results will be, but this shows you what's possible. Now, I think, Diane, can you put the link into the comments on, you know, from the show so people can get connect? Or you could actually, if that doesn't work, you could go to my website, simplytogood.com.au forward slash membership to find out all about my winter challenge. I'm super excited. It's incredible. You should see it. All right, so before we finish up, let's talk about those eight tips for surviving winter. Number one is a really big one. Set realistic goals. Decide what you want to achieve, then get clear about the things you need to do each day. It's not about the week, it's each day to get you closer to your goals. Make sure your goals are smart. Now write this down, smart is specific measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. I mean, what would you like to weigh when spring comes? I mean, get excited because if you think smart, this could actually be your reality. I know, winter can be absolutely fabulous. Now, number two is plan ahead. 
The best way to ensure you reach your goal is to plan ahead. I'm so much a planner. I write everything down. I've got post-it notes everywhere. And I want you to write a menu plan each week and use this to write your shopping list as well. Being proactive puts you in control and makes sure you only have healthy food cho choices on hand for meals and snacks. What you've got to do is make your kitchen a safe winter zone. Number three, don't skip breakfast. Look, honestly, you know I say this all the time, having breakfast each morning really sets you up for success. And this way, you can avoid the mid-morning slump. And have breakfast. having breakfast will kickstart your metabolism and it helps you burn fat, which is absolutely ideal on a weight loss plan. Number four is portion control. Now it's very easy to overserve, and adding a little extra here and there can really add up on the scales, I've got to tell you. So you've got to be diligent on sticking to the right portions over winter. For example, never eat out of a bag. I always portion out my almonds, otherwise I know I will overeat them. And something like rice, because you know we do a lot of that over winter, you know, you really need to think about measuring it. Don't just scoop it onto your plate. For a woman on a weight loss plan, on average, half a cup cooked is what you should have. And for a man, it's three quarters of a cup of cooked. Pasta is one cup cooked for women and one and a half cups for men. So you can see they're the things that you really should be weighing and measuring. Because people say carbs are not your friend, but if you're having two cups of rice, well, yeah, you're over carbon, honey. But doing it this way, in the portions that are right, you'll have a balanced, healthy diet. Number five, don't use food as a comfort. It can be very tempting to use food to warm your soul in winter, but food is just food. Let me say it again. Say it with me. Food is just food. It's not going to solve your problems. And after a binge, you'll end up feeling guilty for overindulging. So don't give food the power. Instead, take your power back and be responsible for your weight loss journey over winter. When your head says things like, oh, go on, you deserve it, or oh, one won't hurt, or you've had a hard day, honey, so have it, go on. Tell your brain to be quiet and don't listen. This is your subconscious talking to you, so don't let it derail your efforts. I mean, I find keeping busy really helps. Reading a good book. I love crocheting at this time of the year or spruce up your garden, or keep busy with a hobby that you like, or take up a new hobby over winter. Just don't use food to fill your downtime or when you're feeling bored. Because you know, on those rainy days, you need to keep busy, or go visit a friend or clean out your cupboards. Number six is keep moving. Your body needs to be active even if it's cold outside. No excuses, we need to exercise all year round. Now if it's raining, then play music or do a workout at home. Or what some people do for three months is hire a walker machine over winter. Or you could join a gym for a few months. The thing is exercise can really help with the winter blues by releasing those feel good endorphins and getting some fresh air into the lungs is just what you might need. To stay motivated, write your exercise times into your diary and have your workout clothes ready to go so you don't change your mind. Number seven is stay, stay hydrated. I mean, you've got to keep drinking water. You can get really dehydrated in the colder months as we tend to drink less water and drink more coffee and tea instead, which really actually dehydrates you. I know it can be a bit of a challenge to get eight glasses of water drunk each day, but all year round you need two litres of water, so note that. And maybe the best way to get your glasses is to plan them throughout your day. For example, have a glass on the hour during the day, set an alarm on your phone so it bings so you don't forget, but you can count your herbal teas as water if, if that helps. And I do that a lot, I love a peppermint tea and I find that is really good. Number eight is stay committed. This is a big one. Don't use winter as the reason you give up on your weight loss. Instead, what if you had the attitude that this winter is going to be fabulous? Make the next few months count. I mean, I lost weight in winter and so can you. It's all about how you think and act over the next few months. Will you be making excuses or will you use winter to your advantage? 
Up to you. You'll be glad you did it when spring comes and you can show off how well you've done. I know you can do it because you know what? Be a winner over winter. Now speaking about winners, for today's giveaway, I'm giving three lucky people the chance to win a box of my premium breakfast shakes. That's right. They're a great all year round breakfast and the, or a snack. And um, especially for those mornings when you're hurrying out the door, this is what you can do. You can grab just the sachet and take it to work and make it up when you get to work. So that way you're making sure you get your breakfast every day because you know we talked about how important it was. Now, if you'd like to win a box, I mean, there's 14 serves in there and you'll also get a 14 day uh, menu plan with it. You have to like the page, share, then in the comments, you know what you gotta do. It's hashtag simply number two good, simply with a Y, number two, and I'll pick three lucky winners. I wonder what flavour you'll pick. Now, next week's show, I'll be back in the kitchen making a delicious pasta sauce out of book three. It's my favourite all-time one. It's Boschiola. I'm excited to cook it for you because it's so yum. And don't forget to check out my six-week winter weight loss challenge. Go to www.simplytogood.com.au forward slash membership. It starts soon. I don't want you to miss out. It's going to be fabulous. Okay, guys, I hope you got some tips for today to help you through the winter months and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye now.